Well, everybody, and welcome to this. And yes, this is me talking about the movies of the summer. I said in August that I'd be doing more stuff on this channel, I know. Um, but other things got in the way, and it just kind of lagged on to the point. I was like, everybody has said everything about these movies. What else do I have to input except my own personal opinion? You know, for whatever you care about that, uh, tune in only. <laughs> you care about uh, my thoughts at this point, rather than just kind of a generic review, uh, which everybody's kind of done and given their thoughts and what have you since the movies have come out, and, you know, it's December now. So, I wanted to basically do an all-inclusive video where I talked about all the movies, uh, really my thoughts on them all overall, the big ones obviously, and then where I think the future is going to go, and where I think, I hope the future is going to go, and uh, maybe about what I would have done differently, or stuff like that, and that's probably just coming from me as the person with a film degree I am now. I'm not even a student anymore, I've got a film degree, so, almost, uh, qualified to talk about this stuff so I know comics and I got a film degree so it gets me a little bit qualified I watched movies and I wrote scripts <laughs> anyway so um, the first one was it was all the way back at the end of April really start of May was Avengers uh, for the big comic book and this is the one that had been building for years and years and years and could they actually pull it off and they did and my thoughts on this movie are pretty much everything that everybody has already said. And that's why, again, I was hesitant to do these videos because I was just like, well, it's already all been said, really. But my thoughts is that always when they do these comic book movies, you know, some are great, some are fantastic, some really get the characters, some are utterly awful and don't get the characters at all, some are, you know, come in the mid-ground, they're the ones that are truly forgotten. But I think that this movie is the first one where nothing was lost in translation. And I think that's the best part of this Marvel doing their own movies. And Disney leaving them alone to do their own movies since they took over. I think the, part, the best part of that is the fact that nothing in this Avengers movie was lost in translation from the comic books. And I mean, I'm not a big Marvel Universe guy in terms of having read all the stuff and what have you. I've got... Fear itself. My birthday last year, and that was back in January, so you know, I've had it for about a year and I still haven't read it. So I'm not really into the big Marvel Universe stuff. I mean, I read Avengers vs. X Men and what have you, um, because I'm an X Men guy, but I'm not into it. But I do like the characters and I do know about the characters and I listen to people who tell me <laughs> about the characters. So I, 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 I have a glancing job of it. And from what I can tell, I sat there and I was like, holy shit. Literally, it was. Captain America, from the comic book page, that just stepped on the comic page, Thor, Hulk, all of them, Iron Man, would just literally had stepped off the page. And that's how the whole movie, Marvel movies have felt so far, and that's how this one felt. It literally was, if you had said to any comic book fan with, you know, the biggest budget and all this stuff, what would an Avengers movie be? If you could picture the perfect Avengers movie in your mind, that's what they made. It was a perfect cross of characterization, comedy, action, everything. It was perfect. And my only thought coming out of it was, I wish that had been an X-Men movie, because obviously I'm more of an X-Men fan than I am an Avengers fan, but a team movie like that, where all the team get focused and stuff like that, and, uh, well, the r rumors have been coming out about what the next X-Men film could be, and that could possibly be the case, but uh, uh, I'd love to see, you know, I love Joss Whedon's work on... X-Men, and I knew he could do a team book in that way, and he translated it to film, and he's become the highest guy. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Got no problems with it whatsoever. You know, obviously it's more of the um, family-friendly, more you know, general audience type thing than, you know, Dark Knight, which is more for, I think, more adult. But that's what these characters should be. It was the perfect translation of Marvel Comics onto film. Which is the start of really a, a birth of a new comic book genre where now they're going to have sequels that follow on, there's going to be one long continuity, it's going to be like the Marvel Universe, but on screen. Except we have to worry about the uh, age factor and the nutrition of the actors, but other than that, you know, it's a new age that's sort of begun here, and people understanding, you know, uh, really in the past ten years it's grown and grown and grown, the understanding of Hollywood that you can make a film that is so close to the source material and it'll be really good and get really good reviews and then that word of mouth will translate into box office which these movies would generally already get really good box office but if you hide these enough they're going to get huge box office and you know with things like Nolan's Batman you know the f 
Batman Begins, people didn't really pay attention to it. Then everybody said, hey, it's really, really good. And then Mushroom Cloud Effect, and we got to the Dark Knight, and of course, you know, the the hype and stuff that was around it. And then Heath Ledger's passing, unfortunately, added to that, but the Mushroom Cloud Effect built to become what was Dark Knight. Uh, and I think that certainly is the best success story of Marvel. They built to this movie of all the solo characters. And that's where I think, just as the might fall down, in that, so they're going to have Batman and Superman, who I'm assuming the story is going to start with Man of Steel next year, of this new DC continuity, assuming Superman's successful. And so Batman and Superman are the ones that everybody knows, and then the others are kind of going to be in the background, but they're going to be sort of like Hawkeye and Black Widow were in those films. Um, that's how you know the majority of the Justice League cast are going to be. I think possibly... And I know I've gone completely off track here, but bear with me. I know possibly that that might mean that uh, Green Arrow might have a much bigger part. I mean, if you're going to join a Justice League roster, I don't think he would have made the top initially for like the first film, like the first roster. But now with the success of the new series, he certainly, you know, is a big possibility in sort of an Iron Man type, sleeper hit type way. Like, he's become popular, so get him in there. Of course, he'll, he'll have to not be uh, Arrow Begins <laughs> if he's going to be alongside Batman. But anyway, yeah, where, where I was going was uh, you get on to the second superhero film of the summer, which was The Amazing Spider-Man. And it's amazing that, you know, the film along with X-Men that brought back or brought in the modern comic book age of superhero movies uh, is stuck in between two other huge juggernauts in no doubt this year was the biggest you know comic book superhero movie year ever and you've got spider-man who was a huge huge hit in 2002 stuck in between batman and avengers so it almost became a sleeper movie especially with people considering this like oh you know it's too soon after sam ray movies and all this stuff but my uh, thoughts on amazing spider-man basically i had the same reaction i had to the 2009 star trek movie I loved the characters, I loved the actors, I thought that Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone were fantastic, I thought that the character relationships were fantastic, I was moved at the, you know, the Parker stuff and the relationship with the chemistry, it was brilliant, it was really well written during the character scenes, I thought the action was great and it made me enjoy the movie because of the characters, the actors and the action and all that stuff. The story, the plot and the pacing, however was left something to be desired, you know, it plot holes enough to fit uh, Green Goblin's glider in there, but uh, I that was, that was the general same way I thought about Star 2009, in that I loved the characters and everything else and the look and all that so much that I didn't care that the plot was crap, I enjoyed the movie anyway. So it, it's how I feel and I really want the next one, you know, assuming there are going to be a next one, I think they've pretty much announced that it is. I'm hoping that the next one can be just like I'm hoping this next Star Trek movie is going to be a movie where it's those characters and those actors and those versions of these characters that I love so much, but in a really good story as well to make the penultimate movie. So that was my kind of my reaction coming out of that. I mean, overall, I really enjoyed it, and I like it a lot more than the Sam Raimi movies. I did enjoy the Sam Raimi movies, especially the first one when it first came out and all that, because it was new Uncharted territory. But I, Spider-Man is one of the ones that I have read the comics of and stuff like that, so I, I'm a bit more versed on them. And I didn't really care for Sam Raimi's take. I thought that the first hour of the first Spider-Man movie was really good. And from the moment that the Green Goblin comes in, it pretty much goes downhill. I think the Sam Raimi movies are cheesy and corny, to be honest with you. Way too much like uh, the, you know, the Burton Schumacher Batman movies. I mean, there was, that was the president. That was the only successful, you know, along with Superman before that. But it felt more like that than it did the later movies. And now I think the success of Avengers and Nolan's trilogy has really shown, you know, serious is the way to go. So I... Uh, they, they were going serious, don't get me wrong, I just thought it was a bit over the top and corny, which is what Sam Raimi is known for, so I... The f look and the feel and the tone of this new one I liked a hell of a lot more than the Sam Raimi movies. So I hope that can continue, but have a story and a plot that was as good and as well structured as the Sam Raimi movies. That's what I'm saying. Um, maybe a better scriptwriter and a better uh, director at the helm, possibly. But we'll see. Maybe this director is... Uh, he was fantastic at the character stuff, it's just the... Uh, big overall scoping the how to put a movie together act one act two act three wasn't great 